Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to name aldehydes. Now, how can we identify aldehydes? Aldehydes have a carbonyl group, C double bond O, at the end of a carbon chain with at least one hydrogen atom attached to the C double bond O. So whenever you see something like this, That is an aldehyde. Sometimes it's written out in this form as well. So you have like a carbon chain, it could be anything attached to that carbon. And there has to be at least one hydrogen attached to the carbonyl, to the carbon double bond O. There must be at least one hydrogen. You can have two hydrogens, okay? But that's like the simplest aldehyde, which is known as formaldehyde, okay? Or methanol. So the IUPAC naming rules for aldehydes is as follows. One, you have to find the longest chain that includes the carbonyl group, the actual aldehyde group, okay? Two, for aldehydes, the carbonyl carbon is always carbon one. So we call that a terminal functional group. It's always carbon one. Three, identify a name substituent, if any. And the last one is to put everything together. And when you're naming, replace the E at the end of the alkane with AL. So the suffix for aldehyde is AL, A-L, okay? Example one, if you're given this compound and you're asked to name it, the first thing we have to do is to find the longest continuous carbon chain. In aldehyde, the C double bond O must always be carbon one, okay? So this is our one, two, three, four, five. And that is our longest continuous carbon chain. There are no substituents or branches and therefore we're just gonna go ahead and name it. So since we have five carbon chain, five carbons in organic chemistry is pence. And since you're naming an aldehyde, you're going to name it as if you're naming an alkane. So complete this as if it's pentane, but then we change this E to AL, and that is it. So the name of this compound is pentanal. The second example, you're giving an aldehyde that has other functional groups attached. So aldehyde with a double bond attached, that's an alkene. Aldehydes have more priority than alkenes, so the way we're gonna name this is, as usual, this is your carbon one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, six, seven. If you count from five here up and up, that would be six and seven as well. So we're just gonna go with the first one. Since both sides are equal, so your longest continuous chain, no matter where you count from, whether it is up or towards the left, it's gonna be seven. Okay, so now we've identified our longest continuous chain. We have substituents in this particular example. Our first substituent is the chlorine, which is going to be called chloro. So chlorine as a substituent is chloro. And then the second one is this one here. That is two carbons. Carbons as a branch are acyl groups. And since it's two carbons, that will be ethyl. Okay, so we're going to put all this together and name this particular compound. When you name a compound that has a branch or a substituent, you name the substituents first. So we have two substituents, chloro and ethyl. We name the substituent, arranging them alphabetically. So the chloro comes first. You have four chloro, the position of chlorine, okay, on carbon four. So four chloro. Then on carbon five, you have the ethyl group attached. Five ethyl. And the longest continuous chain is seven. The preface for seven carbon is hept. And then remember, we have a double bond this time. If we didn't have a double bond, I would have said heptane and just replaced the E with al. But because of the double bond, you're going to say hept three, then E, N. So 
in, as if you're doing in, in terms of alkene, because you have a double bond. So instead of the heptane, we would say hept3 in, and then change this E to al. Okay, so this is going to be 4 chloro 5 ethyl hept3 in al. So the only difference is that if there was no double bond, I would have said heptane and changed the E at the end of the in with al. But because this is a double bond, it's going to be in and double bonds, you must specify where the double bond is. And that's where this brick comes in. So the three is just to show that, oh, the double bond is at this certain position. Okay. And then you replace the E at the end with the AL as well. And that's the name. 4 chloro 5 ethyl hep 3 in now. The last example I have, you're given a compound that has two aldehyde functional groups. So we're going to start counting from any of them, okay? It doesn't matter. They are both terminal. So I'm going to start from my left. This is carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, okay? That is the longest continuous carbon chain. There is no substituent and there are no other functional groups for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and start naming. We have eight. The preface for eight carbons is oct. So we're going to name this in full. So that will be octane. Because it's two aldehyde functional group, we're not going to get rid of the E. Please note that. Okay. So you're just going to say octane dial. So instead of getting rid of this, you maintain it, and then you use di to indicate that there are two of those aldehyde functional groups, all right? And that is it. So the name would just be octane dial. I hope you find this video helpful, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already, and share to others who might find this helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and do have a wonderful day.